This is Kyung Won Kim. It's a pleasure to meet you all through this online surgery session. Today's patient is a 68-year-old male. As you can see here, this is the panoramic x-ray from the patient's initial visit. The patient's number 21 is severely loose, and he complained of discomfort in that area. Looking at the CBCT scan, we can see that number 21 is nearly floating. On the palatal side as well, bones have been somewhat destroyed. Particularly on the labial side, you can see that a significant amount of bone has been lost. The patient reported pain and significant discomfort in the area, along with severe tooth mobility. After reviewing the CT scan, we found that while the gingival height is somewhat maintained, the labial bone is entirely absent. Instead of immediate placement after extraction, we decided to first perform socket preservation using AOS collagen to prevent soft tissue shrinkage on the labial side. Then later, we will follow up with the secondary implant placement. Here you can see the post-extraction condition. The number 21 appears slightly extruded compared to number 11. During extraction, since there was calculus all the way up to the apex, it was removed. Looking at the upper right image, you can see that the labial wall is completely destroyed. To address this, we performed thorough socket preservation using AOS collagen. A hidden X suture was used. Although gingival height is not an immediate concern, the extensive loss of labial bone means that in future implant placement, the soft tissue on the labial side may shrink significantly. Therefore, we planned a two-stage surgery, beginning with socket preservation. After extracting number 21 and applying AOS collagen for socket preservation, we took a panoramic x-ray. This is the CBCT data right after the surgery. The palatal bone also shows some resorption. However, since the labial bone is completely missing, we prioritized preserving the soft tissue in that area by using AOS collagen for socket preservation. The next image shows the condition about a month and a half after surgery. Here is a panoramic x-ray taken about five months after surgery. An implant was also placed in the upper left posterior region, which we will discuss in a future session. This image shows the condition of the area five months after socket preservation for number 21. The temporary tooth was attached to the adjacent teeth using resin. Observing the socket preservation site, you can see that some labial bone has been maintained. Working with the One Guide team, we developed a surgical plan. The implant will be positioned palatally, and since the site underwent socket preservation, additional bone grafting will be performed in the labial area. This is the surgical procedure. You will see more details in the surgery video later. To prevent gingival shrinkage in the labial area, AOS collagen was used along with additional bone grafting, a technique we refer to as a dual zone graft. The procedure was designed to support both soft and hard tissue by adding sufficient AOS collagen for additional bone grafting before suturing. Initially, we considered placing a temporary restoration but due to insufficient stability, we instead placed a healing abutment. The final prosthetic restoration will be done later. This image shows the condition right after the surgery. Since this is an anterior tooth, it could be aesthetically unappealing. Therefore, we temporarily attached the tooth to the adjacent teeth using resin. Initially, we tried placing an abutment in the immediate post-operative procedure but the initial stability was lower than we had expected. Thus, it seemed better to submerge the implant. So we used a dual zone approach to determine the extent of the bone graft. This was re-evaluated using CBCT during surgery. At that time, the ISQ value was only around 60, making it difficult to proceed with a provisional restoration immediately. 
So we opted to switch to a healing approach. We replaced it with a healing abutment. Looking at the labial area of 21, we performed a graft using AOS collagen in a dual zone approach to support both the bone and soft tissue. The image shows the condition one week after surgery and nearly seven months after socket preservation. This next image shows the condition three months after the implant placement. After three months, the labial bone has been well maintained. The final prosthesis has now been seated. Even after seating the final prosthesis, the labial bone around the implant has been well preserved. This is the status after placing the final prosthesis. The top center image shows the patient's original tooth before surgery. Compared to number 11, number 21 appears significantly whiter. The patient preferred a brighter tooth shade, even if it is quite different from number 11. Looking at the bottom right image, the shade closely matches that of number 22. Although it is slightly brighter, the patient specifically requested a whiter shade, so we adjusted the shade accordingly. The contour of number 21 and soft tissue contour are being well maintained without retraction. As seen in previous CT scans, the bone is also well preserved. Then we will review the surgical video. You can see that the socket preservation site has healed well. We then place the one guide template, which fit well. While creating the one guide, we also prepared a provisional restoration, considering the possibility of placing it on the day of surgery. Next, we removed the soft tissue. As you can see, the implant position was placed slightly towards the palatal side. After removing the soft tissue, we used a flattening drill to trim the remaining bone. Since there was originally little to no labial bone, we proceeded with the initial drilling as per routine. We did not use a path drill or other special tools and proceeded with the initial drill. Since we planned a 10 millimeter implant, we followed with a 3.5 millimeter by 10 millimeter drill. To enhance primary stability, we limited the 4.0 millimeter drill to a depth of 8.5 millimeters. Next, we proceed with the 4.0 millimeter by 10 millimeter implant. We will place the 4.0 millimeter by 10 millimeter implant. We will use the engine for 70 to 80 percent of placement and then use an implant driver to finally position it with the torque wrench. It is just over 10 Newton centimeter. This made us think that the primary stability might be slightly insufficient. The ISQ value was around 60 to 63. So while we originally considered placing a temporary restoration, we decided to make a minor incision and perform a dual zone grafting technique on the labial side. In order to prevent soft tissue shrinkage, we carefully created a flap on the labial side and performed a sufficient bone graft to preserve the anterior bone. As you can see here with the flap open, the implant surface is slightly exposed on the labial side in the socket preservation area.
We placed a healing abutment and added additional bone graft using AOS collagen on the labial side. We also placed the abutment and took a CT scan for confirmation. The implant placement position appears to be good. As you can see on the labial side, I used AOS collagen to sufficiently augment the buccal and labial areas of the implant. In order to prevent soft tissue shrinkage on the labial side, we performed a dual zone grafting technique, which supports both hard and soft tissues. We used a sufficient amount of AOS collagen for the bone grafting. Since the ISQ value was insufficient for an immediate provisional restoration, we proceeded with suturing. Because the labial mucosa is thin, we used an anchor suture by utilizing the adjacent teeth to avoid excessive soft tissue damage. We hardly performed periosteal releasing incisions and instead applied a thick layer of AOS collagen graft in a dual zone approach. Similarly, we performed suturing along the mesial lines in a dual zone approach. As briefly seen in the surgical video, the key takeaway from today's case is that before extracting number 21, the labial bone was completely destroyed, while the soft tissue height was maintained. Therefore, we first performed socket preservation and then placed the implant as a secondary procedure. Initially, we planned to place a provisional restoration simultaneously, but due to lower than expected primary stability, we opted for healing. We then performed a dual zone graft with a sufficient amount of AOS collagen. As seen in the left side image, we used the patient's own extracted tooth as a temporary restoration by bonding it to the adjacent teeth with resin. Looking at the final prosthesis, the gingival height has been well maintained and we used a brighter shade as per the patient's preference. This concludes the case. Thank you for watching.